So let's revise. We are integrating our force or our function f of z. It's a complex function and we're integrating it along at a curve c. c is of course another complex function. I'm going to call it z of t like this. And z of t can be parameterized using the variable or parameter t as x of t plus i times d, i times y of t. A moment ago we saw that if we separated out the real and imaginary components of our force function f of z, we could rewrite it having the real components and the imaginary components separately. Of course we could easily parameterize these as well, so we could have u, which is a function of x and t, each a func excuse me, x and y, each a function of t, if we like. So what we do is we see an alternate representation of this, this line integral. So the line integral written in its simplest form is the line integral of f of z dz is u plus iv integrated dx dy. So I've written that at the top right of your screen. Now just note something for a moment. Of course if we take the derivative of z, our curve, if we take the derivative of this, it's simply going to be x prime of t and plus i times y prime of t. But x and y are both functions of t. So x prime is going to be del x of t del t plus and uh, y prime is going to be del y of t del t. Now, just let's consider another integral. Let's consider if we did the following integral here. So we're going to take our function f of z, which we're going to parameterize with t, and we're going to multiply that by z prime of t, which is our curve, by the way, and we're going to integrate that t, t, dt. It's important to note the distinctions. f of z is our force fun is our function it's our let's say our force field but z prime of t is the derivative of our parameterized curve along which we're integrating the uh, the force field and what we're going to do is we're going to parameterize the uh, we're going to parameterize the force function with t as well so here's our force function which at the, for the moment I haven't let haven't parameterized I've just left it as u plus i times v of course, it can easily be parameterized. And then we have the derivative of the parameterized curve. So it's x prime plus i times y prime integrated dt. So if you just multiply this out here, we get the expression written on the bottom right of your screen. Note, of course, is separated out the real components, u dx minus v dy, and the imaginary components, u dy plus v dx. But the point is, this is exactly what we started with. This is exactly the limit of s sub n as we let n go to infinity, or this is our line integral. It means that our line integral which we had here is equivalent to this particular integral here. How is that any, how is that any good to you? How is that useful to you? Well, let's tell you. First of all, you parameterize your curve z with t. Then you calculate the derivative of your curve z with respect to t and we get z prime. Then you substitute your curve z of t for all f of z. And then you perform the integral. The point to note here is that this function at, at the top right of your screen, f of z of t, this is our force, we'll say. This is what we'll usually be integrating. But we're going to plug in the parameterized curve in here for z. So let's say, for example, let's say our force was the following. In actual fact, I'm going to do an example in a moment anyway, so just bear with me. So let's take this closed contour integral. So it's dz over z, where the contour is along the unit circle counterclockwise. So I probably should have a little arrow like this to say which direction we are integrating. So the function the function we are integrating is in actual fact 1 over z. That's why we're integrating dz. And we're integrating it along the unit circle. So we need to parameterize the unit circle. We parameterize the unit circle by saying it's cosine t plus i times the sine of t. That is, the parameter, that is a parameterized circle centered at the origin. We take the derivative of that with respect to t. 
Then what we do is, we take our parameterized z of t and plug it into our original function anywhere we had z. So in this case it's 1 over z, so we get this, this component here, cos 1 over cos t plus i times sine t, and we multiply it by the we multiply it by the derivative of z and we integrate dt. The answer of course is twice pi i. In a future video I'm going to derive what's known as the differential arc length formula which is really what I used above. Some authors use it to rewrite the integral formula in the following way. And it allows us then to have three representations of our line or contour integral. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. You can pause the video to view that if you like.